Join me today on Walk With History as we talk about the Moses of her people, Harriet Tutman, outside of Bucktown, Maryland, on Walk With History. And here I am celebrating a very important woman of American history, Harriet Tubman. We're here at her birthplace outside of Bucktown, Maryland. She's born into enslavement circa 1822. They believe the beginning of March 1822, but this was her enslaver's land, her enslaver's home. Uh, Brodus, the Brodus family. And her mother is enslaved by him. And because of that, all the children are enslaved by him. Her father belongs to another enslaver close by. He will eventually get his freedom. But the law at the time is the children will become whatever class their mother is. And so if a woman is enslaved, their children become enslaved. It doesn't matter if the father is free. But this is the location where she has her early childhood, where she grows up, and it's here where she starts to learn the, the, the traumas of enslavement. Her sisters are sold away from her. Her family is broken up, and she gets to really see this breakdown of what happens to people in enslavement. Physical trauma happens here as well, and this is really the foundation to start this hero of American history. So we're here in Maryland at the Harriet Tutman Underground Railroad Visitor Center run by the National Park. And just for a little background, the Underground Railroad, it refers to a term used in the 1830s, originated with resistance against slavery, acts of self-liberation, people who would do this makeshift uh, route as they ran away from enslavement. And it would go through the states into Canada, enslaved people escaping bondage and escaping cruelty. And it was called the Underground Railroad because they're going, they're following a trail of makeshift places to kind of hide and seek refuge. And it's underground, so no one knows about it. And uh, Harriet Tutman becomes basically a conductor on the Underground Railroad. Tubman is born into slavery uh, March, and this is the month we're here, of 1822. And she makes her first escape in 1849. So she's about 27 years old when she makes her escape. She's seen family members sold away from her, her sisters sold away from her. And so she knows that to remain in slavery is not only the physical trauma that she has taken, but the mental trauma of losing your family and your loved ones. And so she just wants to escape it. And then she will come back and lead people through it, at least 70 family members. But she does other things. We'll talk about her in the Civil War, uh, basically being the first female uh, leader of a, a militia in the Civil War. She's also a spy. She's also a nurse. Just think of her as a basic uh, Renaissance woman. And finding a love as deep as I've known And be your dead So when your days are lonely And your soul feels bored I will be your shelter I will be I will always love you. You will always be my son. 
So this shows that Harriet Tubman and her family were enslaved to different areas, different enslavers in the area, and they had to travel great distances to see each other. She traveled great distances to see her parents. She, she traveled great distances to see her brothers and sisters. And this is where she starts to use the knowledge of the landscape to her advantage when she starts to liberate people. How to travel this, how to know which way is north, how to circumvent the well-traveled roads to stay out of people's eyesight. And so it's this early life of being away from your family, but still being able to see your family that started to build upon her ability to travel the landscape. I've ever known Loving you more than myself and still letting go. I'm here off of Bucktown Road, and this is the Bucktown Village store. But in 1835, this is the location where Harriet Tubman was. It's right down the road from the Brodess farm where she grew up. And she was here when an overseer came looking for a runaway slave a young man and caught him in the store. Harriet just happened to be here. And when he tried to run away, he threw a two pound weight at him. It hit him and hit Harriet in the head, cracked her skull, left a gouge, and that will forever change her life. Not only will she have seizures as a result, but she starts to have visions, visions from God, visions telling her to fight back, visions leading her to freedom. This is the location where it happens. And again, two pound weight, used in measures when you're measuring the weights of things when people are buying stuff. So it's a weight just sitting on the counter that he grabs and throws and injures her to, to that extreme. Harriet will recall, my hair had never been combed and it stood out like a bushel basket. I expected that that hair saved my life. The blow from the iron weight cracked her skull. They carried me to the house, all bleeding and fainting. I had no bed. I had no place to lie down at all. They laid me on the seat of the loom and I stayed there all day and the next. She was forced to work again, where I worked with the blood and sweat, rolling down my face till I couldn't see. Tutman's slaveholder, Edward Brodess, died in the spring of 1849, leaving his wife with debts. So she, to pay those debts and creditors, wanted to sell parts of Harriet's family away from her. And that's when Harriet was pretty much no more. So this is a recreation of the corn shed that they waited in and they hid in uh, Tupman and her brothers, Robert Henry and Ben, and Ben's fiance, before making their way north on Christmas Day, 1854. When that comes, I'm gonna leave you. Bound for the promised land, I'm gonna leave you. I'm sorry, I'm gonna leave you. Farewell, oh farewell. But I'll meet you in the morning. Farewell, oh farewell. I'll meet you in the morning. Farewell, oh farewell. On the other side of Jordan, bound for the promised land. So this talks about Harry Tubman's work during the Civil War. It doesn't show Fort Monroe. She actually was a nurse at Fort Monroe as well. But it shows how she participated in battles and other military operations. Robert uh, Shaw, remember, from um, the 15th Massachusetts. But it really is her work with the second South Carolina, where she leads a militia. She carried out an army mission, first woman to do so, because of the intelligence that she could gather during that time, and she had this pass that she could move 
cross enemy lines. And again, as a woman, people aren't really paying attention to her, especially a woman of color. She executes River Raid in early June 1863. They dismantled Confederate torpedoes, they blew up bridges, they destroyed several plantations. And in that chaos, she's able to free nearly 750 men, women, and children. So she is credited with the first woman to lead a militia. And because of that, uh, she's my hero as a veteran and as a woman of the military. Woke up and I caught the feeling And somebody just took off the ceiling And I can see the sun shining Not a cloud, just a silver lining So at the end of the Civil War, a lot of enslaved who were now free put ads in papers trying to find their family. Now you remember 90% of people couldn't read and write, so even to find those ads was difficult, but they would say, my sister's names were, they were sold this date, they were sold, at last I knew, to an enslaver in this state, and this is how families try to reconnect with each other after the Civil War. This talks about just the other members along the Underground Railroad, dozens of people, women, men, black and white, helped Tupman along the way. And these are just a few of them. But there is like a circuit, right? There is like a circuit along the way that you will travel. And these are the people's homes, and there's different ways to identify their homes, different way to identify the locations. But all these people are involved. Because Harriet Tubman is the first woman to lead a military militia, she leads 150 men from the second South Carolina and frees 750 people. I'm leaving this flag for her, for what she means to American history and what she means to women's history. Thank you, Harriet Tubman. out here to the location where Harriet Tubman spent most of her childhood at a farm once owned by Edward Brodus. We're reminded of what um, people can go through, how resilient they are, how powerful they are to break bondage, to break away from the wrongs of life and to make them right. And Harriet Tubman is one of those people. She needs to be remembered for her strength and for what she did leading people out of bondage in all situations, whether it's military, whether it's as a spy or whether it's as a conductor on the Underground Railroad. On to my next Walk With History. Yeah.